Landing somewhere between poker and Magic the Gathering, Marvel Snap has taken over as one of the most popular digital card games on the market, even winning Mobile Game of the Year at the Game Awards in 2022. The games are fast and full of intense strategy with lots of creative deck building possibilities. My name is Ethan for The Gamer, and today I'm going to teach you all about a really sweet deck archetype, Destroyer. Destroyer decks revolve around their namesake card, Destroyer. This bad boy gives you a massive 15 power for 6 energy, but he comes with the slight downside of destroying all of your other stuff. But with the right deck, you can turn that downside into a positive for you. I know you can't see it, but I'm using air quotes when I'm saying the word downside because it's because it's, we're making it good. So what makes Destroyer such a good deck to play? Well, there's a few things that really make it stand out. First, it's pretty easy to build and doesn't require that many specific cards to work. As long as you have the Destroyer itself, you can make it work with a variety of different cards and it's super flexible. Also, the game plan is very straightforward with strong early game and late game plays, which make it easy to learn and still very powerful. No matter what cards you choose to use or what version of the deck you play, the game plan is pretty straightforward and the same all across the board. We want to leverage our early game efficient plays that we have to put on a lot of pressure and then finish the game with our late game bombs like the Destroyer and Professor X. One of the keys to success with this deck is to make sure you only focus on two lanes. A lot of times when you hear people talk about this deck, they'll explain something called the Destroyer lane. This is where we put all of our cards that we want to die, such as the Hood, Nova, Bucky Barnes, you can put things here like Colossus, things that don't have a negative downside and instead have a positive for us if they were to be destroyed. And then the second part of the equation, once we have our destroyer lane set up that has a lot of power, you'll wanna make sure you have a lane where we're gonna either drop the destroyer or another in-game threat. Now, you don't always need the destroyer to win, but it never hurts to have him and definitely helps our game plan. So some key cards to make this deck work. Of course, we have the destroyer. That's the namesake card. Again, it is a six energy, 15 power big boy. On reveal, he's gonna destroy all your other cards. And remember that it's an on reveal effect because this is gonna be very important later on when we talk about another couple cards. Now again, all of these cards are flexible, but cards that you might wanna consider for early game, if you have the hood, the hood is excellent. He may be a minus two power, but on reveal, he's gonna give you a one one energy six power card which adds a lot of pressure to a lane if you don't have him it's not a huge deal there's a lot of other cards you could slot in here but cards you should probably always be playing are nova nova is just a great card one energy two power on his own but when he's destroyed he's gonna give all of your other cards plus one power uh, another great card that we want to be destroyed is Bucky Barnes. Two energy, one power, not the greatest stats, but when he's destroyed, he summons a six power card in his place in the form of Winter Soldier. Now another amazing card for early game pressure is Carnage. One of my favorite cards, two energy, two power, but what's really good is when he reveals, he's gonna destroy your other cards at the location you play at and give you plus two power for each of them destroyed. So you can set up a lot of awesome plays where you have like a Bucky Barnes or in a Nova, you destroy them and you're gonna end up getting a six power Winter Soldier in its place. Carnage is gonna buff up by two and then the Hood's minus two power is gonna be gone. And that really, really puts on a lot of pressure early on for not a lot of resources. Some other really great synergistic cards you could play are things like Killmonger. This is gonna destroy all one cost cards, including your own and your enemies. So if they're playing a deck with a lot of one cost units, you're gonna kill them all you're gonna laugh, and then all of our one cost units that we're playing, we want those to be destroyed. We don't want the hood to be around, so it's an upside for us, and generally a downside for them. Unless they're playing the same deck, then things get a little crazy, but Killmonger is still a great inclusion. So again, we have a lot of stuff we want to be destroyed, but for things we don't want to be destroyed, we have a lot of things that we could do to protect them as well. And one of the core cards that I always recommend running, and this is a card that I would include as being something that's core to the deck, this goes hand in hand with Destroyer really, really well, is armor. It's gonna protect an entire lane. It has an ongoing effect where cards at this location can't be destroyed. That's yours and your opponents. A lot of times what you'll do with armor is you'll set up the Destroyer lane where you play Bucky, Barnes, Hood, Nova, all that stuff, blow it all up, and then you can put the armor down. That's gonna protect them. So when you play a Destroyer in another lane, none of those cards are gonna get destroyed because they're safe. And then probably my favorite two cards that I like to play, I think Professor X is 
one of the coolest cards in the entire game, and how he works is he's going to lock down a location. This means any cards in that lane can't be destroyed, your opponent can't play cards in that lane, you can't either, but it's another way to really protect a lane. So if you have valuable cards in a location, he can work kind of like a second armor, but he could also be a second win condition. If you're winning a lane and your opponent doesn't have cards there, you can just put this down. You can even put it on an empty lane if your opponent doesn't play anything. You can just win with him alone. Professor X is a blast. If you have him, I recommend trying him out. And then another card that I very, very much like in the archetype is Cosmo. Not only is it cute pupper, because what game doesn't need more cute puppers? He has the ongoing effect where on reveal abilities don't happen at this location. Again, for your opponent and yourself, but it's important to know, Destroyer is an on reveal ability. So if you play this in the lane with a Cosmo, it's not gonna destroy anything, it's just gonna be a 15 power body. So if you're in a position where you don't want your stuff to be destroyed, you can just play him alongside the Cosmo, keep everything safe, and spend some time with a cute doggy. So let me show you my favorite version of the deck, and this is the one that's utilizing Daredevil. If you have Daredevil, this version is so much fun. If you don't have him, it's not a big deal. But Daredevil is a very powerful card. He's gonna let you know exactly what your opponent's gonna do on turn five before you make your plays. This lets us be able to play something like Hobgoblin, and Professor X more efficiently because we know exactly what our opponent's gonna do. So we can draw Professor X in response to what they're doing. So a lot of times you could put this down to make sure that they don't get to add cards there. You could put this in a lane that's empty, but you could also play someone really fun like Hobgoblin, who's gonna give your opponent a minus eight power on their side of the board. Playing things on your opponent's side is super good in this deck since those aren't gonna be destroyed when our destroyer hits the board. So that means you could also play things like Green Goblin because it's also gonna jump to your opponent's side of the field if you want to. As you can see, this is why the deck is so flexible. You can play so many different cards. There's a lot of good synergies that you can play, so you don't necessarily need all of the different cards. I would say if you have destroyer and you have armor, you can make a destroyer deck pretty easy. But yeah, that's really all there is to the deck. It's not very difficult to play. Once you put in a few games of it, you'll kind of understand the play patterns, knowing where you should put units, where you shouldn't, when to play Destroyer, when to lock down a lane with Professor X, which again, my favorite thing to do, because it feels so good knowing that you're just never gonna lose that lane. I love it. But that's all there is to the deck. Thanks so much for watching this video, and for all things gaming, check out thegamer.com, and we'll see you next time.